We are back. I'm super excited for this episode. Uh, I got my guy, childhood friend, childhood, childhood, childhood yeah. friend, almost yeah. yeah, teenage childhood teenage, friend. Yeah, yeah. Uh, man, uh, I'm excited for this episode. I'm gonna you know allow you to introduce yourself and uh, give you handles and all that. But I think I'm uh, especially excited for this episode because um, I follow this other pod called Earn Your Leisure, mm -hmm. um, and They've always been like blessing people with tips and and information to to get out there to better yourself when it comes to financially or when you're buying a home or et cetera. <clears throat> but I feel like I, this is this is that episode for me. Like I wanted to be able to sit and talk to you and just have you just drop a ton of gems, but also like. It could even be the start of helping a lot of people right. understand what this conversation is about. Um, so yeah, man. Uh, obviously, I know you as Ruben, but you can introduce yourself as however you want. You know, yeah. Ruben the Realtor, whatever you. Yeah, want. Yeah, no, no, definitely Ruben. My name is Ruben Rodriguez, also known as Ruben the Realtor yeah. on the gram. <laughs> um, I grew up in uh, Midtown Manhattan. Yeah, uh, my entire life, really, up until the age of twenty, twenty-one. Uh, my whole life was on. Ninth Avenue. You said yeah. Midtown, but it was definitely the projects. No, 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 no. no it wasn't the project. Weren't you by Papacitos? I was. Yeah, I mean Section Eight, but it was a nice, it was a nice building. You know. What I mean? no, so, I got you. <laughs> um, but but no. So I mean, literally, my whole life was on on Ninth Avenue between Fifty Fifth and Forty Second, um, and Ninth and Ninth and Tenth. Yeah. Uh, my whole family lived on Ninth Avenue and Tenth Avenue, and literally, uh, my best friends, my church, my school. Um, everything was, was there, you know, my, my world was small and, and, um, I love growing up there, man. you know? I mean, that's, I think that's the thing about New York. New York is so big, yeah. but where you live is literally your world. Yeah. It's like four block radius, yeah. or eight block radius, whatever it is. It's yeah. like, that's how it is for you. But I had my aunts, my uncles, my, right, my right. grandmothers, you know, everything. My dad was, was, you know, down yeah. the block and I mean, everybody, everybody was very, very close and, you know. Yeah. Um, night having a food festival everybody's like hey listen meet me near the Matarepa spot and you know yeah, it's, yeah, it's just yeah. yeah yeah I mean it's um, yeah I think I'm gonna butcher this story one of my favorite stories of like our experience or whatever growing up uh, was when we were at camp right mm -hmm. um, and I think you were running for like some sort of like uh, I don't want to say prom king yeah that's exactly you, what it was well, that's king what it was of, king of a hike but you, that was crazy. And you like really like stretched that. But <laughs> you sang, what was it? Uh, Un Dia La Vez, right? Yeah. Bro, killed that. Bro, can I just say, one of the best moments of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Felt like uh, amazing. Yeah, you know, I was like, you know, yeah, Rico Swami up there. Man. That was good. That I was had good. hair, you know, I was like thinner. It was a good time, man. It was a good time <laughs> in my life. <laughs> no, that was good, bro. No, we've had, we've had a ton of... Uh, a ton of memories, man, especially yeah. like Papacitos and stuff, yeah. which is interesting because I feel like we, we <clears> haven't <throat> always been like the tightest, but we always mm -hmm. find a way to come back around yeah, and, for sure. and connect. So I always yeah, yeah. like really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I remember I was working in the city, right? And I know this is going to jump straight into like the topic, but I was working into, I was working in the city and we were like working out together. Yeah. Like, don't laugh at us. <laughs> um, but we were like working out and I remember you were like, yo, I am tired of my job. Yeah. And it seemed yeah. like a pretty dope job. I was like, yeah. damn, I want that job. But you said, yo, I'm tired of my job. And literally, I think it was like a year later. Yeah, well, a couple of years later, I think. You were yeah. like, yeah, I'm done, yo. I'm gone. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess, so talk about, I guess, the person you were as a kid, as a young man growing up, getting mm -hmm. that job. Because I felt like it was a pretty dope job. Yeah, it was. And then you just feeling some sort of like, this wasn't enough for you. I wasn't. <laughs> yeah meaningful or whatever the yeah. case is. Can you speak on that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think it was actually, I had, we had recently, my, me and my wife had gotten married. And so I was, I was in this job. I'll start from the beginning, I guess. I grew up in a home where, you know, having that good job, that union job was goals. That right. was key, you know. Um, I, I come from a family of worker bees, you know, and, and everybody is, is aiming for that and aiming for that steady paycheck. And, Great. So at 20, um, at 20 years old, um, my stepmother hooked me up and got me a job at this place called IATSE National Benefit Funds. Amazing job, union, benefits, I mean, vacation, all that good stuff. And I thought I was set for life. I thought I was set for life and I was, I was very happy. I mean, um, it seemed like a good job. It's a great job. It's a, it's a great job. 
I want to say about six years into it, I started feeling um, very unfulfilled. Yeah. I was I was behind a desk. I, I wasn't talking to anybody. I, I fancy myself a a personable person. You know, yeah. somebody that that likes definitely to an extrovert for sure. One hundred percent. And I was stuck behind um, a desk. Yeah. You know, and it ended up being eleven years behind a desk um, until you know I made that decision to to move on. But yeah, I remember that very very clearly where. I was just super upset at times where I was trying to get fired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming in late and, you know, and th- the problem with being... Proven, we're promoting you this <laughs> week. <laughs> the problem with being an extrovert is um, I, I people like me. Right. Um, I would make people laugh. I kept morale up. That's, that's I, you know, uh, and they loved me around there. So, um, no, they'd be like, don't worry, Ruben. Don't worry. You don't we'll, have to we'll, do we'll just, work. We'll just, just, just sign this warning and you're fine you know and and um so i i couldn't i didn't get fired um and I'm staying there 11 years um 11 years you yeah 11 years and then but so how i got into real estate i guess we yeah, could just go yeah. from there um was i was very unhappy with my job sure but i wanted to make extra money um so i i googled <laughs> what can you how can you make money without a degree <laughs> Right. And, and, um, you know, real estate popped up and I was like, you know what? A friend said that I had the personality to do real estate. And I said, all right, great. Let's jump on it. Got my license, failed the test like four times. It was crazy. And then, uh, (laughs) my wife told me she was pregnant. Right. No, no, not pregnant. She, um, yeah, I think my wife told me that, that, that she was pregnant. I was like, I have to, have to pass this test this time. Really? Yeah, yeah. I think she told me like after or something like that. But it was it was a moment where you, you could tell after I told her the fourth time, her face was like, "You can't, you can't be serious." Do you pay? Do you pay for like that? Yeah, test? yeah. I pay for that test. each one. Yeah, but I didn't care because I didn't know I was just chilling. I, it was just a side gig for me right, at right, the time. Right. How much is it? Well, or is I, it different everywhere? It's different everywhere. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in Jersey, I just had to to in order to retake the test with like nineteen bucks, twenty. Oh, okay, okay. It wasn't crazy. Um, so yeah, I just ended up, uh, getting my license. Um, and so you became a realtor before the baby came. I became a realtor before the baby came. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and what was that like? Cause I know there was a time where you were still working mm-hmm. and doing it. And then yeah. there was like a, all right, if I'm going to do it now, I got to go all in. I guess. Yeah. That. Yeah. So, <laughs> so when my wife told me she was pregnant, I was like, oh, I really need to make money now. So I, I bunkered down the next time I, I passed the test. And um, nothing. I, I didn't make anything from it because, or, or even tried to put anything into it because I was so focused on, you know, trying to become a father or, right, you right, know, right. getting ready for that that step. And I was just putting in a lot of overtime at work because that's where the, the money was coming from. That's where, you know, the guaranteed money was. Right, right, right. And, you it know. It was a sure thing. It was a sure thing. And so my mind wasn't even thinking about real estate. Um, and then my son came. You know, things are fine. My wife stopped working. You know, obviously she had maternity leave. And um, and I just started started panicking a little bit because I'm like, oh, man, you know, my wife makes you know decent money. And now I'm this overtime maybe is just not cutting it as no, much no, and, and all that good stuff. <laughs> it's a funny story. I actually got a third job. Wow. Right. Uh, my uh, I got a hookup in a, um, a building to be a porter. So legit scrubbing toilets and vacuuming uh, floors just to make sure that that my wife didn't have to work, um, you know, so she could stay with the baby because that's what she wanted and and that's how. Oh, so she had left her job. Yeah, yeah, for a while, you know, she 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 did the maternity leave and then. Um, was it one of those things where you can take more time but we can't pay you kind of situation? Kind of situation, gotcha. yeah. And she cool. was just like, yeah, cool. yeah, I just don't really want to go back to work. I want to spend this time with my kid. And, totally you know, it. listen, yeah. for, for me, uh, I was, postpartum is a real thing. For sure. And I, my goal going into it was do your best to avoid, you know, the serious damage. Did she have postpartum? Um. I think she had, you know, there was some times where she got the blues. I think, sure. listen, I'm not trying to gas myself up, but I think I did a pretty good job of trying to like, like really getting ahead of it. Okay. Like if I just saw her even getting a little bit like overwhelmed, go get your nails done. I got the baby. Don't worry about it. Right. You know, and um, I think for me, the important thing was since the baby was born, since my son was born, 
I was very, very active and I was intentional about that yeah. because I wanted her to trust me um, in order to, so, so she can go and have her own time. Sure. And I think that was the mental aspect because that's what I've learned, you know, where the fathers aren't active. They're not doing the hard work. They're not doing the diapers. They're not doing the feedings. And I had to be intentional about, you know, being an active father from the get so that okay. she could trust me and go handle her business. So when was it that you just decided, all right, I'm jumping in? Yeah, so um, <laughs> I got, I got, I started getting, all right, so I got one deal. You know, uh, I don't know if, do you know Noel? Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So Noel, Noel, he wants to sell his house. And this was a year. And he trusted you with that. No, no, he didn't. Oh, okay. He called me. He said, Ruben, I'll let you pitch. I'll give you a shot. He would. Tell not. me what you're going to do. He would say that. He would. <laughs> he told me, tell me what you're going to do. He said, I'll, I'll give you a shot to pitch me. And, and, and my wife. And uh, if we like you, we'll go with you. Okay. I, Fair I'll enough. I love him forever for that. And 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 Ruth, uh, obviously, shout out to them. Um, such a big um, moment in my life. Sure. Because I was ready to give up on real estate because I wasn't getting leads. I wasn't doing anything with it. They gave me a shot and um, ended up selling their house for more than what they originally wanted. And then and then some. You know? Okay. So, so we gave them a better... Uh, I guess number that that the other real estate agent gave them, and then we sold it for more. You know, went over. Oh, so what, so you, all right, you can just correct me if I'm yeah, wrong. Yeah. So you put the number and say, hey, I think I only know million dollar listings, so that's what, right, right. That's what I'm going <laughs> off of. Mm-hmm. But you say, all right, I can sell this for whatever four sixty. Yeah, yeah. So I and I, yeah, obviously I, that was higher than what the other uh, person who mm-hmm. pitched was. Yeah. So they went with you and you got yeah. it for more. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I, I basically I sit down and I say, Hey, listen, this is what the cops are telling me. This is what other homes have sold similar to your home. Sure. I can sell it for this much. Done. Great. When we put it on the market, um, somebody paid more than asking. Oh wow. Because yeah. they because there was a lot of interest. Uh, in okay. It. Um, and um, so yeah, so we sold it. They were happy with it, and we got them into a bigger house, which is the house that they're in now. They love it, and they're probably never going to move on with you know, right. Whatever. So. Um, big moment for me. And, um, yeah. So what was the other question? <laughs> so now nah, I'm jumping off. I'm jumping around now yeah. since we're just having a conversation, but all right. So knowing that you got the kid, you're jumping full fledged, mm-hmm. you sell your first house. Sell my first house. I don't want to know the number. I, don't, I think that's intrusive. I'm not yeah. saying how much did you get, but yeah. did you feel when you got it? One, did you say, Man, I can really do this, or yeah. and or two, <clears throat> did you say like, this is great, but this isn't enough? Yeah, like yeah. did it make you want to go b- yeah. get a job, or did it make you say, all right, I could I could really keep going? Yeah. So at this time, I was still working. Okay, right? I'm still working two jobs, right? Um, I I'll tell you, I don't care. It's nothing. It's uh, so I ended up getting like three thirty three hundred thirty five hundred dollars from it. Okay. Um, not obviously not the biggest, you know, chunk of money. Um, but because I had to, you know, give sure. my company and then I, I had help from another experienced agent because I didn't want to screw my, my friend up. You know okay, what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm like, I'm looking at him. I'm like, he is trusting me with a lot right now with right. where his family's living. So it was like you and like Ryan Turnhat. Yeah. Some, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Something yeah. like that. Something like that. Uh, so I wanted to make sure I did right by him. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't about the money. At, at first, obviously, getting my license was about the money. Sure. I wanted to get a side hustle. I wanted to use my personality to, to be able to make some money. That first closing with Noel and seeing their face and, and how happy they were and us celebrating together, that I fell in love with the process that moment. Literally right. at the closing table, I was like, wow, I love this. This is fun. It was tough, but this is fun. This is something I can really sink my uh, teeth into and, and, and try to... So that's, to make something is that when you were like, all right, I'm gonna jump in full. No, so like I want to say about six months later. Okay, six months later, um, after my second deal, um, I started getting calls from people. Hey, Ruben, I see that you're doing this. I see you're doing that. Getting a couple of closings. Like, like friends or just people. In people I knew, not okay. necessarily friends. But connections, just connections. Sure. You know, acquaintances. You know, people I, I grew up with and um, whatever. Uh, I'll tell you the name outside. Ooh, the real. The real. Mo- like moment where things changed for me. Sure. I got this one call from this specific person and he said, Hey Ruben, what's going on? He asked me a bunch of questions and said, um, <laughs> are you a full-time agent? I was like, I do full-time hours. 
And, but no, you know, I'm, I have a job because I need health insurance because I have a son now. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Great. Thanks. Hung up. On <laughs> <laughs> Hung up. It's so good. And, and I was like, oh. Horrible for you, but it's funny. No, yeah. Horrible for me. Still calls me to this day asking for advice. I'm not going to say his name right now. But um, so he, when, once that happened, I realized I'm missing out. Okay. I'm missing out on business. I'm not going anywhere here. That's a job. The job that I had was a job I could die at. You know, sure. I, I've seen people there for 30 years and then pass away. I went to funerals. And I think one of my biggest fears was being that person. Right. You know, um, just being unhappy for 30 years of my life. You know, um, I wanted to find something that would satisfy the soul as well as being able to provide for my family. And that's yeah. when, you know, I made that decision two months before the, or no, like three weeks before the pandemic. I thought I made oh, the really? biggest decision. I, like, I, I mean, I thought I made, made the, the pandemic. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I thought I made the biggest mistake in my life. 100%. <laughs> it was the scariest because I was going to, you know, lose health insurance. I was going to lose yeah. a steady paycheck. I didn't know what was going on. I wasn't. I wasn't going to be able to go out and, um, you know, door knock or sure. make calls or whatever. Everybody. I thought the world was ending. Yeah. You know, so it was very scary. And that's uh, you know. So luckily, it turned out to be a, a very white hot market where you know things were moving and I was sure. able to to do some. How long after the Noel deal did you get your next one? Months after, because I, I doubled I doubled on the well. I sold his home and got him into another one. Oh, okay, okay. And then that year, um, I got another friend. I'm going to shout him out, Luis Fernandez. Sure. Just amazing. Another another person who just really gave me that opportunity. And uh, there are three people, if I could shout them out. Sure, All right, so Noel, Ruth Polanco, um, uh, Luis Fernandez, and Mike and Shelly. Yeah, 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 yeah. These three. These that mic house is crazy. Nice, right? Yeah, <laughs> I got a deal on that one too. It was crazy. Um, I'm not trying to like gas myself up, but <laughs> everybody's gonna be like, "You see, he's a sailor." <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But um, but yeah. So these people really gave me a a, a foundation, sure, and made me a novelty, you know, a novelty realtor into a legit realtor, and I'll always be grateful to them for that. Yeah. You know? So I I I, I stopped and. I jumped into the jumped into the real estate game, sure. you know. And again, it it started out because of money. Um, but as I continued to do closings, as I continued to talk to people, a lot of a lot of what I was doing was making connections with people, yeah, um, who who knew me and felt comfortable enough to ask me questions, right. And during that process, I really learned that a lot of people just don't know. Yeah, they're yeah, afraid yeah, yeah. to ask. They're afraid to talk to a financial, you know, um, you know, provider or like a lender um, because they're they're afraid that their social is going to be out there or, you know, people are going to take money or right off the bat. Um, and and something that I've, I've been stressing the last few years, really, um, and made part of my pitch is ask questions. Sure. If you're thinking about owning a home, if you're thinking about buying a multifamily property, just call and ask questions. Get educated on right. the process. Well, I think a lot of people feel like even to ask questions, you got to pay. Yeah, no, which which is one hundred percent false. Yeah, the the lenders that I use are amazing. I I handpick the lenders that I that uh, I so for recommend. People who don't know what a lender is, mm -hmm. what is a lender? So like, um, because I don't. Everybody knows a personal me. mortgage lender or okay. yeah, or sure. a private mortgage private mortgage lender. Um, so instead of going to like a Chase Bank. Or, or a big bank and you having to fit into their criteria to, to um, I guess, qualify for a loan. Sure. If you speak to a private lender, they can work around your situation. Because okay. this, 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 every transaction is different. Every person is different. Every family has different needs. Sure. Um, so it's really, I love working with a lender because um, they cater to your needs. You don't have to fit into, into their molds in order to qualify for a loan. Right, right, You know right. what I mean? I think that's super important. There are so many aspects to uh, getting a mortgage or, you know, buying a home. Um, and and it's all situational. So would you say you recommend lenders over, over banks? 100%. Yeah? 100%. They, they are more willing to talk to you. And even to the point where I've, I've had people come to me and say, Ruben, what do we do? 
Great. All right. So let's talk about your needs. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to talk to this lender. Call them, interview them, and ask as many questions as you want. They'll leave that conversation saying, Ruben, I learned so much. I'm not ready, but in six months I'll be. Okay. And that's important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because now it's giving them the confidence. It's giving them that game plan. All right. If I do this, I can reach this goal. Sure. And that's, that's what it's all about. Right. You know, you have to prepare yourself. You know, people are not going to be ready right away all the time. Do you, does someone go in and try to find their own lender or they meet up with a realtor and say, hey, do you, like, does the realtor normally connect you to the lender or is that a process that you can kind of do on your own? You could totally do it on your own. And I, what I tell people is I'll give them a couple of numbers that I, of lenders that I trust. Right, right, right. Um, and lenders I know are going to treat them the way I treat them. True. You know, lenders that have a heart of service. Yeah. Um, but. I would totally recommend that they go and call around and interview people who they feel is going to work for them. Yeah. You know, I would say, uh, so talk a little bit, you said, you mentioned the heart of service, I guess, talk a little bit about that because Mm -hmm. like for me, this whole process is all about trust. Right. Right. And I think I get, so the way I grew up, money was tight. Mm -hmm. Right. So that I have it, I want to hold on to it. That's right. And I want to make sure I make the best decisions possible. Yeah. Now, when I get a kid yeah. and get two kids, I even want to be it's even more like, yeah. I want to make sure like I'm making like the key decisions. How do I not see a realtor as a cheesy salesman? Um, or, or you, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or you. So the way I do even it. Though is, I know you're not one. Yeah. But well, I, I mean, mean I, I remember me. Okay. Yeah. So in our transparency, and I remember me asking you questions when we were, me and my wife were thinking about buying. Yeah. And now we're like, yeah, we don't even want New York or Jersey because mm-hmm. it's snow. But I remember sitting with you and asking you a billion questions mm-hmm. like one night. Yeah. And then you answered a ton. And then like a week later, I had like a, a ton of new ones. Yeah. Like, I don't think everybody has that luxury mm-hmm. of like, texting someone who yeah. so i guess talk about that trust process talk yeah. about that like how do i not consider realtors like someone who just wants my money yeah listen a lot of a lot of them are okay lot, you know a lot of people are going to just try to push in a random deal for no reason just to get their their um their pockets filled you know um but i think something that i do and I, um that has worked for me just to show my i guess that I actually care, right? Um, is I'll if I'll look at a home as if um, if I'm gonna live there. Okay. If I'm not gonna live there, I'll tell you right off the bat, this is not the one. I don't think you should do it. And that's giving people that that sense of security, like, oh, okay, he's not just trying to push in the random deal. Sure. Now, even before that, like even before that, just to to get a conversation going uh, with a realtor about asking questions. I don't know. I mean, you have to feel it out. Yeah. You have to have that conversation. And if they're just like pushy where they're like, all right, great. So when do you, you know, get pre-approved right now. And if they're forceful, they're probably just looking for a paycheck. Right. Now, being forceful and being um, like, like for me, I have to be assertive. Sure. Hey, listen, this is a bad deal. This is a good deal. I understand that your worry is here, but here's how you can fix it. Um, and in the long run, it'll be a better decision, whatever. So, I mean, I have to have those conversations with them. Sure. Um, but, but I think people see through it, you know, I think people see through, you know, that, that kind of aggressive, um, kind of tactic of just trying to close a deal. Yeah. Um, luckily I have never had that issue. Um, I haven't had anybody trying to either accuse me of that or or anything like that. Um, so not yet, no. not yet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, but, but I think it's just, it, you feel it, you know, if, if they're trying to be very forceful, right. you know, if they're trying to push you into doing something that you don't want to do. Yeah. Huge red, red so flag. I was going to ask you this question of what are some signs that we can kind of look for when talking to somebody, but I guess I'll kind of reverse it or switch mm-hmm. it up and say, what are some of the things? What are some of the things that you do to make <clears throat> the families you meet mm-hmm. comfortable? To make them comfortable? To make them, I guess, trust you in yeah. a sense or any of that? Yeah, I try. I, honestly, I just try to connect with them on a human level. 
Okay. Um, I read Ryan Serhant's book, and this is giving my my tips away. You know, this is giving my 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 juice. But um, he 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 said everybody hates shopping, or everybody hates being sold. Yeah. Everybody loves shopping with a friend. So my my goal is to connect with people before we even start searching for homes. Sure. Um, on a human level, because at the end of the day, this is a human business. This yeah, is a, yeah. this is a human interaction, um, and um, that that's just my goal is to make them feel comfortable, connect with them. You have kids, great. I have kids. Um, as a father, this w- this is what I look at at a, uh, you know when when looking for a home. Yeah. Or you know, oh great, you work here, great. Okay, yeah, I used to work in the city. This this these are the best towns to commute in, you know, to commute into the city. Um, so I just try to connect with them on a human level, sure, um, and hope 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 that they that they trust me enough, yeah. you know. Um, and that's my goal. I have to earn that trust. That that's my that's my job. You know, they they owe me nothing. I yeah. owe them everything. You know, if they're coming to me for a service. I have to provide it also on a human level. You know, because be, as a realtor, I'm going to be a therapist. I'm going to be uh, you know an advisor. I'm going to be that's good. a hand yeah. holder. You know, and and. You know, that's just the process. That's good. All right. So can you tell me what are, all right, what would be some tips that you would give to like a family or someone wanting to buy a home? Mm-hmm. What are some tips that you would throw out there before they even jump into that process? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, number one is going to be um, speaking to a lender or a financial professional. Um, and it's it's a super generic question. You're going to hear it everywhere. Um, but I think it's literally the most important part um, of, of buying a home is in the beginning, knowing where you are financially, knowing where your credit score is, knowing how much uh, you have saved and how much you need to save. Um, I, I think that having that conversation is really going to educate you and, and give you a sense of direction. Sure. Okay. So you can... If you speak to a lender and they say you're ready now and you could do this and you, you've saved and you've taken care of your credit, great. Now you can start the process of buying. But if not, and I've had this happen where you know there people aren't ready, they need to save you know a certain amount of money. So a lender to- will tell you. Sorry to cut you off. <clears throat> a lender will tell you like I don't I don't think you should pull that trigger now. Like maybe you should wait a bit more. Yeah. Well, some a, a nice lot of lenders a lot of lenders won't. Okay. So okay. The lenders that I recommend will. Okay. And that's why I, I work with them, right? So I, I interviewed them before when I when I first started. And I first started getting that that sense of, oh, this is an education business as we go on. You know, as, sure. you know from, from the beginning, we have to educate these people in order for them to really, if we want to make it to the closing table, they have to know what's going on. Right, right, right. You know, and people feel more comfortable when they understand. Um, and, and people don't you know, even attempt to buy homes because they don't understand. They think yeah. it's an impossible task. And um, that's false, 100% false. Um, so, yeah, I think number one is getting getting pre-approved, knowing what your buying power is, meaning knowing what you can afford. Sure. I also, I also feel like um, a lot of people want to get the biggest, nicest house, and that's fine. That's great. But uh, I guess one of my my I guess nuggets are don't don't go buy a house and be house rich where you're literally working every and every cent goes to your house. You still want to, you know, go on vacation. You still want to do things with, with your family. You still sure. are going to want to splurge on yourself a little bit. Um, so when you speak to your lender, I would recommend um, giving them a number that you feel comfortable spending every month. If let's say right, right now is crazy. Right, it went up thirty three percent. New York, all the COVID uh, rents are are gone and skyrocketed. You know, like fifty percent. It's crazy. So if you, let's say you're you're paying two thousand dollars in rent, and you're like, you know what, I could do a mortgage of twenty nine hundred. You know, and feel comfortable, feel safe. You know, be still be able to save a little bit, still still be able to you know do things with my family. I would say go to the lender and say, hey, listen. I want to spend twenty five to twenty nine hundred dollars a month. Am I pre approved for that? If not, what do I need to do to get there? What are the steps? Where do I need to have my credit score? How much do I have to save in the bank? Um, you know, all that good stuff. Um, wh- wh- what do I need to change in my spending habits? And good lenders 
will explain to you in detail. Sure. Because at the end of the day, yeah, maybe you're not going to be buying a house that moment, but they're going to need business in a year from now. Yeah, they're yeah, going to yeah. need business in a year and a half from now, two years from now. Um, so it, it's all, it's a relationship business, you know, and good lenders will um, teach you um, to be financially responsible in order to reach your goals. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know this is probably a loaded question, right? <clears throat> but we're both Latinos <clears throat> and we both come from the gutter. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Have you found it difficult to share um, with people of our ethnicity the importance of ownership and how hard has that conversation been? Um, I don't think it's been hard. I okay. think, I think for me, it's, it, I think the hard part is getting um, somebody to be willing to have that conversation. That's right. the hard part. Um, but as I continue to be more successful, as I can, every, with every closing, I'll get three more people back from Ninth Avenue saying, Ruben, I want to close on the house too. Gotcha. What do I have to do? Right. Great. Right, let's right. have a conversation. So let's talk about they're, it. They're, they're <clears throat> becoming more encouraged yeah. as they see someone yeah. that they yeah. know mm -hmm. actually yeah. like, yeah. yeah, it's like, it's like you had like just what you said earlier. You, um, when you were thinking about buying a house, you had me on text. Hey, right. Ruben, what about this? What about that? Um, I think people who know me or see me grow up or, you know, all that, they 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 say, All right, let me let me DM. You know, let me let me slide into the DMs. Let me ask, hey Ruben, what's going on? You remember me from, you know, PS one eleven? How can I buy a house? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's fine. I love that. That's great. Um I was at that camp where you became prom king. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. Um, but but yeah, I, I think um, uh, um, so so now I'm I'm starting to get a lot of that. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. and when we have that conversation, I'll explain to them the importance of owning. Sure. Um, you know how that could start a, a domino effect for generations. Right. You know. Um, That's good. I grew up. I grew up again. Ninth Avenue. Everybody grew up on Ninth Avenue. My whole family. And it's funny because every every time <clears throat> a uh, a cousin or something like that was old enough to get on the lease, you know, or or try to take over, they would let's get her on the lease. Let's go so that if I some, God forbid something happens to me, they keep the apartment. Yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. think, and for me, you know, a lot of family they're they're trying to keep an apartment that they don't own right. instead of putting their money into. Owning a home and being a, that 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 home appreciating in value, sure, and being able to either be passed down to you know the kids, or God forbid something happened and you can sell it for more money and right. you know invest it somewhere else. I mean, there has to be pure pure <clears throat> joy in the fact that when you go, you literally have a home mm -hmm. to pass down yeah. to your kids. Yeah. Like, I I I definitely subscribe to that a lot yeah. because. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, mom. You know, you're probably not going to watch this anyway. <laughs> but, like, when I remember when I had my second kid, she was like, yo, listen, apply for housing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. cheap. Like, and I'm like, man, I love you, but no. no yeah. Like, that's, I'm trying to go the other way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I guess it's tough because um, the more people I meet, the more just uneducated, scared, yeah, realistically scared yeah people i meet because they're like yo like i'm finally in a place where i don't feel like i'm poor right or i don't feel like i'm having a live check to check mm -hmm. i don't want to mess that up yeah and i guess it's important that you say like you know stick to stick to a certain like i guess price range yeah. or whatever the case mm -hmm. is that you're able to still live yeah. um because you don't want to throw money into yeah. you know and i guess what would be another personal nugget you might have um, or, or how about I switch it up for anybody who's listening and wants to become a realtor? What would what would a nugget be for them? As a realtor, or as somebody who's going to buy? No, because someone, as, if you're going, if, if I want to be a realtor, yeah. you know what I mean. What what would be one nugget you would give me At, for for future realtors? Oh man, it's not it's not it's not an instant gratification job. You're going to struggle the first couple of years. You know, it's this is not where because. It's it's unfortunate and and I get it also, 
uh, the people around you aren't going to trust you right. with uh, such a big process. True. Yeah. Which is why I, I I give flowers to, you know, the people, the, who, the, yeah. the, the founding three families that, that really gave me that shot because um, without them, I wouldn't be here. You know, I would never have the... the Was that your first three deals? Those were my first three deals. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, f- I wouldn't say four. So the first four, I did two in the well. Four. I got you. Yeah. So whatever. Um, but yeah, those are the first, my first three clients that I closed on. Sure. During that time, I I I was getting more clients, but those were my first three, four, four closings, really. Yeah. Um, and I w- I would appreciate them forever. So, but as a realtor, you're you're not going to get, you're, you're not, not going to get, gonna get closing like that. You're not. Yeah. You will. You okay. will. But, but it's going to take a while. Yeah. And it's not going to be instant gratification. It, you're going to have to put in the time. People are not going to trust you. And unfortunately, we come from, you know. Uh, a culture where you know sometimes it's not we're we're not the most um, supportive. Sure, you know, and um, they'll look at oh we got his real estate license. Mm. No, I would rather go to you know whoever because he doesn't know me. And and that's also a part of it too where they're they're like I don't want him to know my finances. I don't want him to know this. I don't. Yeah. And I don't necessarily know your finances. I have a general understanding of where you are. Um, and what you can afford because I need to know in order to search for homes for you. Sure. Uh, but I don't know, like, you know, I don't know the details of that's between you and your lender. Right. You know? Um, so, you know, they're afraid of that too. I don't want them. I don't want him to talk crap about me. I don't. Ha- and that that's, listen, uh, sometimes that other people, they, they, they leak information, you know, and it's unfortunate, you know, yeah. but for me, I, I like to keep everything close to the chest, obviously, because it's my reputation. You know, this is this is where, you know, uh, I support my family and, sure. and and this is how I grow my business. You know, I've I've heard so I've I've always felt like in business, you don't really start to like really do well until you your business your business has exceeded past family and friends. Mm-hmm. But for you, I feel like you're doing something special and different. Or maybe I don't really know much realtors, so maybe this is a thing. Mm-hmm. But I feel like you're really like going through all these connections that you've made over the years Mm -hmm. and literally saying like, yo, let me, let me help set you up. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Like, let me at least walk you through the steps. You know what I mean? And I think that's building a lot of trust. Yeah. I mean, like I've always told you, I'm like, yo, if you got, like if you're selling houses in Cali, yeah, yeah, you let me know yeah, yeah, yeah. or wherever you know what I mean. But you only want to stay in Jersey. That's yeah. you know, that's up it's to a you. lot. It's a lot right but, now, man. I'm trying. I'm trying to take over Jersey, and then maybe I'll expand. And then you know, you're gonna get on the show, and then, maybe, yeah, nah, yeah. No, nah, I get you, but I guess talk about. I want to say talk about the selling aspect compared to <clears throat> the buying because we we're, we're focusing a lot on mm-hmm, buying, mm-hmm. but. Let's say I want to sell. Do I go to you and say, "Hey, I want to sell"? Is how's that process mm-hmm. like? Um. So, yeah, you would you would reach out to me, and uh, I would come give you a free home evaluation, let you know what what I think about the home, look at the updates you've done, look at what's wrong with the home. Because a lot of the the problem is when you're selling a home, you're attached to it. You sure. Know? So, you know, um, I'll get people saying, hey, listen, you know, I painted this. <laughs> very, I mean, that has to, you know, boost the, the equity of the home, right? Sure. No, it didn't uh, because they're just going to paint it back, you know, um, or, or, or whatever. But um, so it's really, I think the hardest part there is really uh, kind of talking to the seller and, and getting them to, you know, really level out, come down to earth a little bit. Um, and before I mean, we sell, right? Because I mean, there's also trust there, yeah, right? Because if I it's know, a, like, yo, houses around my area are selling for this much, yeah, I want this much or yeah, more, yeah. But then there's a realistic conversation of, like, is your house like this that? This is what, right? And this you, is what the offer came in, yeah. And it's like, I guess that's also a trust process, 100%. Right? 100%. Uh, you, and and that that has to do with really being straight up from the beginning. Yeah. You have to be straight up. You have to say, hey, listen, this is what we're going for. This is what I, I can get you. I know I can get you this. I'm pushing for this. Kind of that, that kind of sure. stuff. You have to be transparent. You have to be transparent. 
Now, because I, I always say, listen, it could go another way, but the way I market homes is different. Right. You know, we were in, I mean, we're, we're slowing down a little bit now, but the last two years, my listings all have gone over asking, which all, almost all right. of listings have gone over asking. But I put in, I go the extra mile for my client, um, even in a hot market. Imagine sure. what I'm going to do when it's not. Right. Imagine right. the steps I'm going to take to make sure your house gets sold. Right. You know what I mean? Um, but again, that's a trust. That's a trust thing, and, sure. and the process is is a little bit different because um, now now we're talking about money. Right. Now we're talking about you paying me. Right. When you're buying, you don't pay the realtor. Right. Right. So when you're buying the home, the commission comes from uh, the the listing agent okay. and the and the seller. The seller's paying all the commission. Uh, to the listing agent and the listing agent splitting a percentage with me. Right. So any any buyer is not paying for the most part. Obviously there are some situations, but ninety nine percent of the time you're not you're not as a buyer, you're not paying the realtor. Okay. So I guess this conversation comes up because I know you spoke about um the three people that helped you out, mm-hmm. but you also did some work with Los as well. Right? Carlos. Car- yeah, right. you gotta stop giving me my bad. nickname. That's my guy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So one of my mm-hmm. best friends, he yeah. reaches out to you and he says, mm-hmm. Hey, listen, I wanna sell this. Mm-hmm. Not putting his business out there, but yeah, obviously yeah. he wants to sell this. Mm-hmm. But it's not like it's not like realtors put their like, hey, I just got usually when I see your your post, mm-hmm. I see families that you help get into homes. Right. Not necessarily like, yo. I just yeah. sold this for such and such and yeah. such. So how does that transaction, how does that transition happen where he says like, yo, I see you're getting people into homes. Can you sell yeah. my home as well? Yeah. Or is it also like you're putting someone into his home? How does, is that how it works as well? Or No. So when I'm talking, like when I spoke to Carlos, I, you know, and, and Giselle, I went to, I went to the house. I say, hey, listen, I toured their home. I said, you have a beautiful home. You know, these are the downs. These are the ups. Um, cause you know, that driveway. <laughs> I'm sorry. Your driveway's crazy. <laughs> your driveway's nuts. Well, I remember when I posted, cause I, I did a whole like nice walkthrough video. Yeah. 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 That. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, it's he, a beautiful home though. It's a beautiful home. And you texted me, I fell down that driveway. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I had to park on it. I remember, uh, man, funny story. So that he has like a real steep driveway or whatever, but even though I think he like paved it, right. Or he, he newly up, paved it, but it's right. still steep. But when. When he before he did that, mm-hmm. it was steep. I remember I put my car in, and I was just like this. Mm-hmm. I was like, mm-hmm. I gotta get on this driveway, right. and I yeah. parked it on the street. I'm like, I can't do it, bro. Yeah, man, it's it's crazy. Uh, but but yeah, so stuff like that, I'll I'll, I'll you know talk to him about it and say, you know, this is, this is gonna be an issue. It's right. going like that. But this is what I'm gonna do. I'll lay out the whole plan. Sure. Passive passive um um marketing and and aggressive marketing, two different things. Okay. If you're just posting it on. Zillow and Realtor, that's passive. You got to get out there. You got to start making so calls. So passive is not good. No, of course not. So the key the key to selling your home is getting as many eyeballs on it as possible. Sure. As many people in it as possible to see it. You're doing two things. You're creating, right, the urgency. So if like th- that open house, I didn't think was going to be crazy. End up being ridiculous. Why? Did, why didn't you think it was going to be crazy? Uh, just because there wasn't like a lot of parking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. it was kind of like on an off street, and you know, they, they it was kind of like in a mountain type situation. Sure, so sure, I was sure. like, yeah, there's not a lot of parking. There's, nobody's walking around there. Really, it's not like there's no. I don't uh, think you can't. I don't think there's sidewalks. No sidewalks. Yeah, there's right. no sidewalks. So, um, so I was like, you know what? I don't know if it's going to be too crazy. So I really was focusing on, um private showings and getting okay. as many people in there as possible. And um, it ended up being really, really crazy and having over like a hundred groups wow. uh, at the open house, which continued to um, create urgency for that particular home. Sure. Uh, so when you have urgency, now you're like, oh no, I love this home. I have to look how many people are here. Right. So that's number one. You have to create that urgency. Um but number two, you, getting as many people in there as possible it gives you the opportunity to really get somebody who's going to love it. Sure. Honestly, you, you know, the more people are in there, the more chances you have of somebody who's going to love it and go crazy. And that's what that's what we had. Um, that situation ended up being where 
Yeah. I, so tell me if I can be a realtor, right? Yeah. Because I look at that specific home and I know the driveway is like, uh, mm-hmm. but I know that backyard is special. Gorgeous. Yeah. So do I want to, I'm going to highlight yeah. that, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And it, essentially yeah. that's what you would do. Yeah. All my pictures, it looked like it was flat. Um, I did. did. It, yeah. My wife looked at <laughs> so it and was like, did, oh. So what I did was, <laughs> what I did was in that situation, my photographer, my photographer, I said, listen, take the drone. Yeah. Take the picture straight up and, and don't, don't, uh, you know, take the, the sure. photo from, from, from the bottom of the hill up. Yeah. Right. So just create the illusion that it's, it's on a flat hill. Yeah. Um, and those are little tricks that you need that you gain. Uh, I mean, I don't know if people are going to trust you now because of it. No, no, I get no, you. I mean, they're definitely, well, you got to go well, see it anyway. Thing, right. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're going to trust me to sell their home because I know how to get people into the home. Gotcha. And you're also going to trust me when we're selling, when, when you're buying a home because I'm like, this is too much. <laughs> you yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, so yeah. I get you. Um, yeah, there's a little tricks of the trade just to get people in there. But the the home is beautiful. But I think you need to have that that initial like look past the small bad things for a sure. bigger a, a bigger thing. Cause they that was a Cape Cod home and the rooms were big. Yeah, the beautiful. Room, it was great. You know, so like there was so many ups and I think you know, yeah, yeah, I knew yeah, it was yeah. I knew it was gonna sell. I mean, I wanted it so you know, mm-hmm. I was like, yo, just rent it out. You, know? you should have called me. I would have, I would have double ended. The, no, the then I'm pretty, <laughs> no, for me, I'm, I'm so done with like, personally, I'm so done with like New York, mm-hmm. Jersey, mm-hmm. because I look at that home that's so beautiful, but yeah. I'm like, when it snows, yeah. that home is probably going to be a nightmare. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like that's all New York, not just yeah. that specific, that mm-hmm. home. I just feel like I just can't do it anymore. Yeah. Like, I don't know. But, all right. But it, just aside, you know, the reason going back to like the, the general, you know, question of is it important to own sure it is because you know he got it for a certain price a year and a half ago uh sold it for a certain price and was able to you know go to where he wanted to go you know with some cash in his pocket in a year and a half yeah you know listen i understand that the market goes up and down but one of the and listen you're gonna have people who disagree but one of the safest bets is gonna be real estate the reason being is it's all we have. Right. Land right now, what we have is what we have. We're not making any more of it. You know, unless you're going to Mars with Elon Musk. I mean, that's 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 different. You know what I'm saying? But what we have right now is what we have. And um people are always gonna need a place to live. Sure. And you know, people I, I, I guarantee you that when that home was built, whenever it was built and somebody bought it for fifty thousand dollars, didn't know that what I sold it for Carlos, that's what it would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's very, very important. Um, Just ownership in general is so important. You know, um, you know, on the 444 album, Jay-Z said it. Such a good album. Yo, amazing. He really does drop like a bunch of nuggets in there. When he said... Is he coming coming to pot? Yeah. When he said, uh, I could have bought a building in Dumbo before it was Dumbo for 2 million. Yeah. Now it's worth 25 million. Dumbo. Now I feel dumb. Yeah, yeah. You know that's 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 real. He that that's he's really like, and we all look back at that and and like like back and say, I wish I would have bought something. Right. Our parents are always, man. I wish I would have bought a house. I wish I would have. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and we're. I'm trying to avoid that regret. Sure. And I'm trying to get people to avoid that regret as well. Yeah. So, so now that I. How many you're like what three years in now, two years in? No, I'm technically four years in. Okay, four yeah. years in. <clears throat> and I feel like you're becoming more and more creative. Okay. Especially with how you know you're posting, yeah. sharing, you. videos, photos. Yeah. Not easy, by the way. Right. But what is that how does that creative process happen for you? Like when did you decide to do that as opposed to just taking nice pictures and just putting them up? Yeah. Um, I think it's just the time we're living in. Sure. You know, um, people want exciting. People want fun. People want cool. Um, and and it's not cool having a snapshot of just you, you know, looking looking crazy. Yeah. Just like, you know what I mean? Like it's nobody, nobody's really, they're not going to trust that. But I think if people are coming along the journey with me sure. and seeing, you know, what I'm doing with, with families, um, they appreciate that more. Yeah. So what I like to do now, um, something that that has really been sticking with me is every closing, I'll make a video of the families um, walking into their house after we close for the first time. I'll put some nice 
sad music around or, you know, Some emotional. Jake. Yeah, something like that where they're like, oh, my God, where it really intensifies. But my goal uh, when I do that is to show people you can do that. Like right. you can if, if you want that feeling of walking into your home as a homeowner for the first time, we can make that happen for you. Right. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be next month. It may take you a year just to be ready. Right. But if you're focused, we can get you there. Sure. You know, and, and I want people to to be like, man, I want that feeling. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanna we're gonna wrap up soon and I wanna transition into fatherhood yeah. real quick before. But what would be the last tips you would say for anyone buying a home or anyone yeah. who is just still unsure yeah. after everything? Yeah. You said, like, what would be, I guess, your last little personal nuggets for anyone yeah. trying to buy? All right. So first, real uh, honestly, it's going to get pre-approved. Yeah. All right. You have to also get pre-approved um, by a lender who you feel is going to be working for you. Yeah. In every aspect, whether it's attorney, realtor, lender, anything, make sure you feel like they're going to work for you. Okay. Ask them questions. So lenders they, work for you. Lenders work for you. Realtors work for you. Attorneys work for you. Um, th- don't be a jerk to them. Obviously, sure. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. so you know, don't don't pull that out. But um, but definitely ask them questions and and say, listen, if I do this, you know, if 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 I do this, how would it affect you know this and whatever all those whatever questions you have. If they're short tempered, most likely they're not the person for you. They're not going to hold your hand. Right. If they're willing to sit down and plan things out with you, that's the one you want. Yeah, 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 that's the one you want, and whether it be a realtor, with lender, or attorney, because uh, you're going to be relying on these people, and it, and if if they're not willing to plan it out with you, then they don't deserve your money. Sure, you know what I mean. That's how I feel. That, gotcha. That's that's a, a a tip that I have, you know, for all my buyers or you know sellers. Yeah, perfect. Get pre-approved is very important. Yeah. Know what know um know what you can spend. Get your financials in order. You know, and get your your credit in order, and and get all your financials in order. Sure, I sure. think that that's that's key. Yeah, because realtors could get you in. Realtors could, realtors could sell your home, but if you're not financially like sound with yeah. your money, then gotcha. Yeah, it's, it's all gonna go awry. Gotcha. No, I appreciate that, man. I guess transitioning to fatherhood mm-hmm. a bit. Um, for me, I feel like if I'm a realtor, yeah. I'm worrying about my kids all day yeah. just because I don't know if I'm like going to provide or mm-hmm. if I'm, I got to sell this house. Yeah. I guess so talk about fatherhood. One, <clears throat> how was, how was father for you? Your, your kid is now three, three and a half, three and a half. four. Right. Um, actually the same, same time. Same right? month. Yeah. 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 Um, I guess talk about fatherhood, man. Yeah. How's that been for you? What's that process like? Oh, man. Uh, how's it ever growing? Is it, yeah. is it different? Now that you're like full fledged mm-hmm. out there mm-hmm. trying to, yeah, one hundred percent. The panic is there constantly. Sure, you know, fatherhood's changed me to a point where I'm always worried about everything. There's there's never a moment where I'm just calm and no. If I'm not, if like even if if I'm not with my son, I'm worried about if he's okay. Yeah. If I'm with my son, I'm worried about if he's gonna be alright tomorrow. Or, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, you know, or or whatever the case is, but. Um, it, he is literally the love of my life. When I say that, I, I genuinely mean that. Um, he is a trip. Yeah. And and it's changed me uh, to a point where, you know, I don't know how to say it. It's, I, I'm, I'm more patient and a little bit more impatient. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, like, sure. Um, because... <laughs> I guess I, I'm I'm trying to make him sometimes like make him understand like hey listen don't do this or do but I'm also patient with him because if I see him struggling I'm like okay you know like right. all right I, I have to walk him through this you know um but it's cha- it's changing me constantly it's changing I, me constantly I remember one of the conversations we had um you were working like on a Sunday or a Saturday I forgot mm-hmm. what it was it was like a time where people shouldn't be working yeah <laughs> and I'm like yo go home yeah, like no. like. And you told me something. I'm gonna butcher it. But mm-hmm. You were like, "You're sacrificing your now." Yeah. So, yeah. Finish that for me. Yeah. So, um, I, I do, I do what I have to now, so I can do what I want later. Yeah, yeah. So I'm yeah. sacrificing this time now, so that later on in life I can have so much more time with him. I can walk him through, you know, 
uh, each and every step of his life without having to run to the office or do this right. or do that. And this is a sacrifice. This is a huge sacrifice. Like, um, you know, every Saturday morning he's at soccer. I've made it to three practices or three games, or whatever, you know, um, because most of the time I'm just, don't worry, he, he, he finished last week. Don't worry about it. <laughs> But but most of the time it's I'm it's about um, to kill you. No, 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 no. What's up? But most of the time, you know, I'm 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 out already. You yeah. know, because Saturdays and Sundays are busy days. That's when people are, you know, really able to see homes. Sure. Um so yeah, I'm making that sacrifice now so that that later on in life I'm already on a roll. Yeah. You know, um I have to build this business, you know, and and honestly, just so I can build something to lead to him. I want yeah. him to have a better life, you know? Sure. Um I didn't, you know, listen, my, my parents did better than their parents and I'm trying to do better than them. And I feel like it's disrespectful to them if I don't, Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I feel like if I'm not, if I'm not doing better than, than, than they did with me, then it's a slap in the face. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, um, but you know, my dad, (laughs) my dad, I love my father. Uh, you know, he, um, we, he, he was, a man's man you know when i say that he's like no motion you know and um I'm, I'm trying to change that with my son sure while also trying to you know teach him how to, to fight <laughs> you know what i mean no nah, i definitely so don't. it's 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 hard with that balance it's sure. definitely because you, you know i, wa- I want to cater to him when he cries and i do but i also want him to be yeah. tough i know? think one of the biggest biggest things we've learned especially i think it was on like one of the other podcasts uh with jesse where is like my dad or my mom didn't necessarily have the tools that we mm-hmm. have now no way um and no way sometimes we we get upset at that but mm-hmm. the reality is they didn't have they the didn't tools at all that's what makes now a bit better and i think when our kids get older and they have way more tools than we have 100 percent and um, their kids will also have, complain about them. Right, right, right. Just right, the way right. of having kids, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So, my son doesn't even want to hang out with me. Um, no. my, my son the other day told me I had the belly of Santa Claus. Nice. I'm trying to, you know, like, I'm like, my man, I, I saved your life. Like, you know, That's like, it. Yo, respect, respect <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah, exactly. What is success for you? It used to be just money, man. Um, but now, and it's, it's a large part, being free, being financially free to do things that I want to do. Sure. And, and, you know, being able to, if I want to, like, for for example, Fat Joe, when, you know, Maria happened in Puerto Rico, he said, I sent planes of food down to, down to Puerto Rico. I was like, that's dope. I want to be that financially free that when, when I want to do something to help other people, I'm able to do it without thinking. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I know people, it's not the answer, you know, necessarily people want, you know, they want to be happy and that's, and that's true. Yeah. But I want to be financially free enough that I can help people and satisfy my soul as well as, you know, take care of my family. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. What would you say is the most, uh, the toughest thing you've learned in this process? Yeah. Um, in, in real estate or just life? Let's go with both. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, what you've learned in real estate could also be life. Yeah. I want to go with this process of the real estate. Okay. Because I feel like a lot of myself included dads, right? Yeah. Speaking of dads, parenthood, whatever. Yeah. Um, when you have kids, it's completely different. Yeah. You have to really be careful about the decisions you make and the moves you make. Mm-hmm. And you're someone that is proving that you can... At a later age, not yeah. that you're that old, mm-hmm. but at a later age, mm-hmm. you can say, you know what? You I'm, change up careers. I'm going to change up a career yeah. and I'm still going to excel at yeah. it. What was one of the toughest things you've learned in that? Um, and one of the best things too. Yeah. All right. So I, I guess one of the toughest things is, again, it's not an instant gratification job. But I think something that I've learned just in life in general, whether it be in real estate and in life is, you know, this is all temporary. Sure. This moment is temporary. This too shall pass. You know what I'm saying? So in, in moments where it's really, really tough, if you fight through it, there's a light, you know, that that's coming on the other side. If you're in a really good spot, that will eventually end as well. Right. So I think one of the biggest lessons I've learned is, you know, um, take every moment for what it is. Be in the moment when you're in good moments. 
you know, be be present and then fight through the moments that you, you know, that you're not in such a great place. Sure. And then get through it and then you become stronger. I mean, I, I genuinely believe that. Sure. There'll be, there were moments where I thought, man, I, I, there's no way I could come out of this. There's no way, you know, I'm going to get through this. And then I make it through and I'm like, that's all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's good. Not that that's all, but you realize that you're still alive. You're yeah. still able to move forward. And um, so, yeah, it's, you know, yeah, it's this, this two shot pass, I guess. So my last question, we ask everybody who comes on, if you had a billboard, mm-hmm. where would you put it? What would mm-hmm. it say? All right, I'll put it on my back. Say, call me if you're looking to buy, sell, or invest. Uh, no, um, I, I billboard. I would put it, man. Where would I put it? I don't know. I would have a banner, I guess, in the sky. Just uh, like a plane. Say, yeah, like a plane. Are oh, you doing change my billboard? All right, my bad. All right, let's do yeah, billboard. Yeah, yeah. Let's do no, billboard. No, plane, plane, on, on plane. The most busiest highway. I don't know. I don't know exactly where I would put a billboard. But I would, you know, um, I would put this two shot pass, you know, yeah, and that's it, you know, because at the end of the day, yeah, it'll pass, you know, whether it's good or bad, you know, tomorrow always brings something new. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, let people know where they can follow you, reach out to you. Yeah, absolutely. You. Um, just um, Instagram, really. I'm, I'm most active on Instagram. I should be more active on on Twitter and, and Facebook and all that good stuff. I'm trying to do TikTok. We'll see how that works out. Uh, I feel like I'm too old, but Instagram, Rubenar Real Estate, and um, yeah. I know you got some projects in the work coming up too, right? That you're gonna be like sharing with people. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. So I'm trying to start. I'm trying to start a podcast. I, I'm not really sure yet. Yeah. <laughs> we got to talk about that. Um, but but yeah, it's definitely a place where I'm gonna start interviewing builders, uh, inspectors, attorneys. Oh, nice. I just did um, a interview with a lender. Okay. Uh, so that that should be coming out soon um, on YouTube. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I'm trying to trying to do something, but it's really right. just about educating people. It's, yeah. um, uh, I don't know where it'll go, but uh, I, I think instead of hoping that somebody contacts me, yeah. it, hoping somebody contacts me to in order to learn about these processes, I'm just going to throw it out there. Sure. And hopefully, they feel more comfortable to contact me. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you're saying I don't know where it's going to go. I think it's going to reach people because I think people want it. Yeah. Right. And I think you're definitely like you're not doing it for no reason you're trying to feed a group of people yeah um but i think one of the the things that changed my perspective on this pod was like like i remember one time i got like 30 30 views on mm-hmm. a video or like 40 views on the video and i was like oh man i only got 40 views but then someone was like yo i'm saying if you were in a coffee shop yeah. and there were 40 people there yeah you had 40 people watching yeah. you yeah and i'm like like 40 people were sitting mm-hmm and watching that conversation yeah and i think it changed my perspective and stopped thinking big numbers yeah but learning to appreciate like yo 40 people is a coffee shop yeah you know what i mean 100 people is a church or yeah. you know you know so that's how i started seeing life and yeah it's, it's definitely helped i'll take that yeah absolutely. bro i appreciate you coming on I appreciate you. Bro. thank you so much. we out